Hey YouTube, hi Supercell family, I am back with a Supercell video and this one is about your book to count and how doctors can tell when you're in pain and when you're not in pain. Um, it's very, very easy. You know, when we go to the hospital, they check our blood and when they check our blood, they are getting, they're checking our rectic level and this is what tells them when we are, are in pain or not. Now, it's very, very simple. Um, the normal rectic level for adult without sickle cell pain and with sickle cell pain is 0 0.5 and 1.5 0 0.5 and 1.5 and when your rictic level is higher than this say at 8, a 13, a, a, a 18 that means that you are in a lot of pain okay and um when your rictic level is low or whatever the case may be, you know, that just means you're probably over exaggerating your pain. Now, the reason why I do this is because the reason why I'm making this video is because there are sickle cell patients out there that are faking their pain and think that doctors don't know, but that's not the case at all. You know, we can't tell you how much pain you are in or whatever the case may be, we can't tell you how it feel. My 10 might not be your 10, my 8 might not be your 8, but trust and believe if you are over exaggerating or lying about being in pain, there are ways that they can tell. Okay, and another reason why I'm making this is because I was just in the hospital two days before Thanksgiving and my rectic level was an 8. And the nurse told me, she was like, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? I said, oh, I feel good. She had just given me a medicine, and I was feeling better. And she was like, you sure your rectic level is at A? I'm like, yeah. And like, and she was looking at me like, I should still be in pain. And right before that, the doctor had came in, and he started talking to me about hemolysis crisis. And what a hemolysis crisis is, is when your red blood cells start to break down and cause you very, very, very bad pain. And that I didn't know is actually three types of crisis. And right now, I can't think of the other two. When I remember them, I will post a video on that. <laughs> so anyway, um, I did the research. I came in here and I did the rectic research, which I've known about rectics for a long time. I used to know what my regular rectic level was while being in pain, but I forgot. I know years ago, my rectic level was like a 13. So when she said 8, I'm like, oh, okay, that's, you know. That's good. I'm thinking an eight rate tick is good until I came home and I did my research and found out that an eight rate tick is not bad and that eat I was still in pain, but to me that was like my comfort level. Okay, send me home. I didn't want to miss Thanksgiving. But anyway, um it made sense that he asked me if I was having a human rights crisis because my pain was in my bones and your reticular site cells they form in the bone marrow and when they mature that is when they go off into your bloodstream i hope i'm saying these words right so when they mature they go off into your bloodstream and um that's how they do it so a high reticular site count may mean more red blood cells are being made by the bone marrow that can occur after a lot of bleed and a move to high altitude or certain types of anemia. The conditions cause red blood cells to break down. Hemolysis, like a hemolysis crisis, is what I explained to you before. So a reticular count rises after the treatment of anemia, iron deficiency anemia, or folic acid deficiency anemia, which explains why we take, why some of us take iron pills and why some of and why we take folic acid, you know, and a low reticular count, reticular site um, <laughs> count may mean fewer red blood cells are being made by the bone marrow. This can be caused by ap aplastic anemia, anemia, <laughs> or other types of anemia such as iron deficiency anemia. 
A low reticulocyte count can also be caused by exposure to radiation, a long-term chronic infection, or by certain medicines that damage the bone marrow. So, you know, that's just a little bit of research. Yes, I was just reading off the internet. But the normal Richter count is 0 0.5, 1.5 for adults. So if your Richter level is 8, 13, 18, that's high, it means you're in pain. When your Richter level is normal or around normal levels, the doctors notice. This is why they check our blood every day at 6 a.m. or whatever. But I must say to some of you doctors out there that um, a sickle cell crisis can last from an hour to a month. There's no way to say that a sickle cell crisis lasts four days and that's it. That's not true. Not true at all. And I know this because I've spent months in hospitals. And you know, okay, if what, whew, what I'm trying to say, okay, I've been in a hospital where a doctor told me, oh, your crisis only lasts four days. And on the fourth day, I was still in pain. And he was telling me, oh, your counts is good, your levels is good, but I was still in pain. So, you know, the the side effects, the aftermath of a sickle cell crisis is still there. You still be in pain after your blood level is better and all this stuff. You still be in pain. I honestly feel that if I'm in a hospital for four days and my Rick Pick count goes down on the fourth day, then you should give me an extra day in the hospital before you send me home because it's been times when I got sent home and was back the very next day because I was still in the pain. You know, you cannot send somebody home and right away, you know what I'm saying? It, you need, they need time to wind down after that crisis because the crisis can take a lot of energy out of you and it puts your body through a lot. Like that pain is no joke. Also, I'm you know, for those of you that fake your sickle cell crisis to get medicine, um, doctors and nurses and hospitals know when you're faking your pain. They can tell by your lipstick level. They can tell by the things you say out of your own mouth. Nurses are taught to assess their patients. So trust me. And when you go from hospital to hospital to hospital, your name is on something called the black lip. And they keep track of every time you've been to that hospital and the hospitals you've been to in between. They keep track of which doctors wrote you something. Oh, yeah, they're going to treat you. You know what I'm saying? They're going to give you your medication, and then they're going to discharge you. You're what's called a frequent flyer. And that's not, it's not cool because when you treat yourself like that and when you go in and you take your pain, you make it hard for every sickle cell patient out there that really needs great attention that is really in pain. I should not have to wait for my blood work to come back for me to get the correct treatment that I need to get. It's just not cool. I should be getting great treatment as soon as I walk through the doors. And I'm honestly not talking about me because at my home, at my home hospital where I go to, I get treated really good. I have a great, great, um, relationship with the doctors in the emergency room, the doctors and, and on on a floor that I go to, I have a great um what is the word that I'm looking for that start with the R reputation. I have a great reputation at my hospital as a sickle cell patient. And a lot of the nurses love me. They know me by name. You know, when I'm not in the hospital I go and I visit them so my nurses get to see me when I'm sick and when I'm not sick, so they can tell the difference between Charmaine Sherelle, the patient, and Charmaine Sherelle, the person, because there is a big difference between the two. Okay, I plan on making a second video about my hair right after this. This was my sickness video, the next one is my hair video. Alright, thank you guys. Bye.